the dollars that we give, that you and I give and that others give, um, really are making a difference on the ground for these people that are still incarcerated and the ones that get out. The only way you can get away with sentencing someone to a life sentence or something like that is to dehumanize them. The public at large thinks that these people are, are worthy of nothing because, I mean, they've done a terrible thing, but, you know, there, there were children. As teenagers got locked up and put away for 20 or 25 or 30 years, and they come out and they are not consumed by anger. They're committed to the mission of not having other young people follow the path that they've already been on. That's a powerful thing. They got no education. I mean, what I learned when I spoke to the wardens and, and the other administrative people in the jails was that they said that there was no sense uh, giving any, any education to these people that were sentenced to life without possibility of parole because they were never going to get out. So they wouldn't be able to use their education. So all of these people are self-educated. And I find them to be very, very bright and very well educated. I know this. <laughs> the criminal law is administered by people who are elected and they're frightened to, uh, to release people from penitentiary. They, they imagine that they're gonna see themselves on television if somebody uh, commits some terrible crime. That it's not just about giving money. It is about being present, uh, lobbying. It's being present for families of uh, incarcerated persons and for uh, these guys when they get out. There's plenty for people who want to be active to do other than just giving money. There's a lot of work to be done and uh, it's, uh, it's labor intensive and uh, it's an opportunity if you care about this issue to make a difference. The people in the, in the legislature had no idea that there was such a thing. I know I had a friend who was a, 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 a state senator and I, and I saw him on one of the first trips down there and told him about the juveniles uh, sentenced to life without possibility of parole. He had no idea that that existed. So it's, you, you can really have an effect. One of the best social investments I have ever made. Um, my wife, Ann, feels the same way. You know, we, we met Nelson and we said, you know, he needs to have not just a job with RJI, but a job that pays him enough so that he can really engage. A lot of the growth of the organization has been employing, you know, remarkable men, making them spokespeople and ambassadors, and the growth of the organization isn't exclusively that, but a large part of it is these returning citizens. After everything I got called up in, man, I thought it was over. I can't believe, man, it's been a year that I've been home. Just a year ago, man, I was locked up, natural life, forever. It's definitely a good feeling just having that second chance and getting to be a brother and a son and all that stuff, you know, it's the, the small things. It don't even feel real. Sometimes I wake up like, wow, I'm home. This shit crazy. You know, like when I'm around my wife and my family and I'm pop pop, this shit just like mind blowing. <laughs> it's like, thank God for Miller, huh, bro? Right, yeah. Without Miller, it's like almost impossible for us to be sitting here. The state of Illinois didn't want to budge on, you know, the retroactivity. You know what I'm saying? We here now, bro, able to do this work. You know, you had the homies in there like, Every push up, every jumping jack they did, they just wanted the second chance. They inspired not just by what we doing. I get calls every day saying it like, man, man, bro, man, were you doing what we thought you was gonna do? We proud of you. You remember when we had the, the celebration, the Bill Sanders celebration, and we had legislators, we had senators, we had congressmen, uh, 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 we had prosecutors, and they all was here to just listen to what we had to say. You know, I remember doing my Q and A, and afterwards them coming up to me and just was like really interested in how I felt and how I perceived things. And man, that's a powerful feeling, man. And then some of the homies just gonna do it like way better than we doing it right now. Man, I can remember my first time going to Springfield, man. You know, to be in a space where people actually make laws, you know, um, these laws that affected me gonna affect, you know, a lot of people that I know. These people really wanted to hear what it is that I had to say. 
you know, that's a heck of a feeling, man. You know, to engage people that make laws, you know, that want to hear what it is that I have to say about certain things, man. We got to get to the office uh, Mac video ready. So maybe this will make Joby Day. She back kind of crazy. So maybe she can smile later. Fuck! What's wrong, Joby? I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry and I'm tired. And I don't want to do this again. I don't want to sit here and read these letters again. It is so frustrating, but we have to believe that we're still making a difference. We had a pretty good year. We had three bills that we worked with sponsors on to pass in the General Assembly. It's going to give people a second look. That is something that we've helped to make happen. And we got the family liaison bill through, which it's not enough. It never is, but we'll go back and ask for more. We always do. It's got to be more than hope. It has to be. I mean, we did the felony murder stuff, and this letter, we didn't help. And this guy, he's already been in for more than 40 years. He has no chance of getting out. And nothing we've done is going to help him. Baby steps. <laughs> we have to keep going back to Springfield, back to legislators, over and over and over. Sometimes I think they feel that, too. Like, you're here again? Yeah, it's us again. Restore justice. Trying to help this particular population. And we're the people that are going to keep on pushing when no one else does. And we're not going to give up. Hey, Joby. You should look in your inbox. Harold's video is in there. It might make you feel better about what it is that we do. <laughs> How'd you know I needed something right now? He was only 14 and not from a community where they support dreams. Where all you hear is gunshots and slamming door screens. And you had a disadvantage for you leave the porch clean. But everybody had them figured out because they was kids once. And grown-ups love to tell you about this crazy thing they did once. But do you have a clue or a mere hunch how it feels to be a four-year-old bracing from a rear punch? Or walking by your sister's room hearing rear grunts and everybody hears it but nobody interfered once? But was that addressed? Are you from that address? Had all of that been factored in, would you make that arrest? Or would it matter less? Because it's what it seems like when you can give a team natural life and make it seem light. Or hit them with de facto life which is deemed life and still can sleep nights after giving that the green light. That don't seem right. But well, let's paint a scene like he's 14, him and these four teens do this thing, right? And it's a spring night, mischief in the air, lock your screen tight, crimes up, you listening to the mail. They got hoodies on, strings tight, they done took it there. Tired of being hungry and not having different shit to wear. While we sitting cozy, being too insensitive to care like everything rosy. Why these kids living in despair and the trauma? Them details are too intimate to share, but understand their discernment is limited to there. So yeah. Don't expect no logical reasoning when they luck up on the car with the keys in it. Because that neighborhood with the really nice trees in it might just have a place with a safe with some G's in it. That's their reasoning. So they ride around and they fold deep at a slow creep. So you know three hiding down, being low key. Because surely if the police eye them now, they going to know these guys don't reside on this side of town. It's a whole thing. Focus, Mac. They pull up to a cul-de-sac. Cut the engine, hit the lights, hoping no one noticed that. Security in these communities are usually known to lack, but these particular white houses are tighter than what POTUS had. Kids, they were snickering and playing, as if drawing attention was consistent with the plan. They each pick a house, then rock, paper, scissors, bam, chose the one with a whole alarm system and a cam. See, this is what I'm saying. When kids get in trouble, stop picturing a man. He couldn't even climb up to the window on the stand. The strongest one amongst them had to boost him with their hands. But to prove that he had sand, he had to go through with it. He pooting in his pants. The homeowner, too, from what he viewing in his cam. But Shorty made it through like it was beautiful. But damn, the drawstring on his jacket got the looping in the fan. He panicked. All he could do was scoop it in his hand and get the yanking it and yanking it. Dude, and I'm like, man, what you doing? He hated that he had ruined this here chance. If he could only get this freaking thing loose, then he could blam. Damn. Shorty never saw it coming. Before he hit the floor, his friends had already started running, except for one. And he was so upset inside his stomach that he couldn't move, as if he was catatonic from it. Now, normally the police sirens will snap you out of that. Because it ain't like they gonna let you go when you tell your side of that. He never even made it inside, but that's beside the fact. Stolen car, your best friend is dead, and now you tied to that. They charged that kid with felony murder of his best friend. He everything but failed when he heard it. And to think, yesterday they were just sharing a burger. So from the truth, nothing he could think of fell any further. So tell me what's worse, sir. I know that's not a word, but it ain't no absurder. 
That's not a word either, but it ain't as unheard of charging someone with a crime that ain't no one heard of. But hey, if this the way the conversation gets stirred up, then guess who they gonna call to keep on making these words up? Shit, they're fucking upset. They should be aggravated. The whole lobbying process and the legislative side of things, it takes a long time. So, guys on the inside, they don't understand that. Man, even when you locked up, it's hard to tell somebody that. You know, you, you in prison, you got no support. You can't feel it. It's not magic, but we get it done. It's like every year we march in the right direction. We have people on our team that really know how to get the job done. The big push for HB 1064 and the gun enhancement bill. We don't have a choice. We have to do good work. We have to get more people. You're right. We make it change one step at a time. We can't give up. Full alarm system in the camp. See, this We're is doing what I'm it. Saying. We got it. We got this. We're going to make changes. And we're going to make changes that really help people. Yeah, we are. just came in. Can I get on my phone? Yeah, I hope so. How do you work this fucking thing? Uh, don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Cut.